are leading a feature race, and you're on that last lap, who was the guy you least likely wanted to have on your tail? The guy you knew was just going to be mean about it. Or aggressive. Yeah, Tom Dale was. <laughs> he had to run right over you. It's Tom. Right? It's <laughs> yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. He spun me out quite a few times, and I never did get close enough. I would have worked him over if I'd have got close enough. But I never did get close enough to. Tom Dill, him. <laughs> Tom Dill. <laughs> I say he's nuts. <laughs> I tried to run that way with Tom Dill, I remember. Oh, God, Tommy. Yeah, Tom Dill, me and Tom Dill, we had a feud for <laughs> I don't know how many years. you connect with a guy like Tom Dill? What was, what's the connection here? He drove a car. Yeah? Was he any good? No. <laughs> <laughs> One racer that you just didn't want to have at that last lap? Well, I think one of my heroes is Tom Dill. <laughs> uh, Sorry, you win! You win! That's yeah. everybody says that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tommy Dill, there's a pretty good chance he would get a hit back. <laughs> I see. Tom Dill, he was a hot shot back in about those heydays, also. Tom was an aggressive driver. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Dill. <laughs> that third or fourth turn. I tell you what, you didn't want to be uh, in front of Tom Bill. <laughs> you win. <laughs> Is there anybody out there also that sort of was more aggressive than others? The guy who really would kind of bump you around no matter what. Tom Bill took me out of a few races. <laughs> I tell you. On your tail, if you're on the final lap of the final race, the guy you wouldn't want to have there, and virtually everybody. What would, who would you think? Tom Dill would be one because he'd give you a little push. <laughs> if you were leading and you're on the final lap and you're leading in the future and there was one guy you did not want to have behind you because he might just push you around, move you around, or just didn't, kind of just didn't want to have, who would that be? You know who that would be. <laughs> Old Dill. <laughs> Old Tom Dill. Good guy, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> no doubt about it, but but like I say, he's a, good, a great guy. Otherwise, you know, yeah. when the races are all over and the beer and the beer got cracked out, and there he was. He... Tom Dill. Were the guys I've raced with? Yeah. Tom Dill. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Dill. Scared the living daylights out of me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the answer that everybody else, from Squirt Johns to Bobby Schnard to Marv Thorpe, when we asked the same question, every one of those guys, we asked the same question, they said the one single person they did not want to be on that last lap with one-on-one -on -one was Tom Dill. Why would they say that? I don't have any idea. <laughs> I feel good about that. <laughs> well, that, that's the respect that you had. That you I, had for everybody. The, everybody. That's a funny answer. You, you were the hardest guy to race with. You raced harder than anybody. Well, we all knew one out there if we thought we could win. Yeah, I, when I was about 28, I, a friend of mine traded me a motorcycle and I started liking them and then I raced them locally. And then I found out they gave money away for driving cars. <laughs> 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 so I tried that for a while. Stateline fans first heard of Tom Dill in 1959 when the track was running a 100 lap jalopy championships. Tom towed in and outlasted a field of some 100 cars. It was a bunch. <laughs> <laughs>
Plus, there was a fair chunk of prize money for Tom Dill and a two and one half foot high trophy. Yeah, we'll be a prize. Uh... Then the next year, you'd get into late models. Yeah, we, for Mobile, uh, and I run the car for him for, oh, I don't know, two or three years. Then I bought a Dodge, new, right. and raced that for a couple of years, three years. Did you own that Dodge yourself, or were you driving well, for somebody? I bought it from the Dodge dealer and I paid him when I had the money. <laughs> I understand. It was brand new. And it it was covered under a warranty. <laughs> <laughs> Squirt Johns, what's that mean to Tom Dill? Uh, he, he was he was a class of the field at that time. Yeah. yeah. Why was he so good, Tom? He cheated a little. <laughs> <laughs> How did he cheat? <laughs> Engine. Engine? Is uh, that right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm sure he did. He, he told me since. Yeah. He, I, you know, I don't know what you call it cheating, but you know, you're supposed to be running a car that's near, near what they made, and he had stuff done the motor. What did Johnny Whitehead mean to you? Johnny Whitehead is one of the greatest drivers in the world. Yeah. Why is that? Somebody asked me to drive a car that he'd been driving and doing decent with. One night, I couldn't hardly get around the racetrack in this car. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary to go fast. <laughs> so he knew his way around, huh? Yeah. Uh, I never thought he was much of a driver until I drove that car. <laughs> then you realized how good he was. a hell of a driver. <laughs> Last lap and there was just one driver out there and you were racing him that you didn't want to be with because you just kind of knew it was going to be nip and tuck, hard to get around. Who would that one driver be? I didn't think it's him. I was, I was going to say Jack Cooney because he spun out almost almost each lap seemed like when I was running 150 leading. He was going crossways in front of me. Yeah, <laughs> the answer that everybody else, from Squirt Johns to Bobby Schnars to Marv Thorpe, when we asked the same question, every one of those guys we asked the same question, they said the one single person they did not want to be on that last lap with one-on-one -on -one was Tom Dill. Why would they say that? I don't have any idea. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good about that. <laughs> well, that. That's the respect that you had. That I, you had for everybody. The, everybody. That's a one you, answer. You were the hardest guy to race with. You raced harder than anybody. Well, we all knew when out there for that we could win. <laughs> I put the car in the pit and walked towards the racetrack and. There was somebody running towards the pits, and I, I didn't uh, pay too much attention to him to him to hit me right in the mouth. Oh, gee. And he was running full tilt, and just leveled me. <laughs> I mean, I just went flat. It never hurt me. I guess. You respected more than others when you're on the track. You. May have given him a little bit of deference or uh, whatever. Well, yeah, he gave Bobby run because he was going to he was going to pass you anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wrestle any time number four and the move. Here it is, the checker flag and the win. Bobby Stars. Here he is, the terrific Bobby Diamond, his second feature event of the season. What do you say, a big hand for Bobby Stars? Is there a, an incident or a, 
an accident or something where you said, I don't believe that just happened. You know? <laughs> we had several Chevrolets and Joe Maria who owned the cars. Mm -hmm. was driving one himself, and one night he asked me, he said, there's something wrong with that car. He said, come off the corners and it pulls to the right. He said, take it for a ride, my face. So I had a state line, it, go on the track at the pit entrance, eh? get down the back stretch. <clears throat> Through the one, two, come back up past the flagman, over into the, the turn by the pit there. I come off the corner and it pulled to the right. And I hit the fence and rolled it over. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and what did you say when you came back into the pits? I told it pulls to the right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Joe. <laughs> this I used to consider <clears throat> the road between here and state line practice. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? I love it. <laughs> One night, the treasure tank broke off in Panama. They came and got me. I drove the car on order state line from <laughs> Panama. <laughs> stock cars are on their way. Into the third and fourth turn, the pace is faster. Number 22, Roberts at the wheel, qualified for the front row by running 155.7 miles an hour. Weatherly was only a hair slower. Nobody on that racetrack is slower than 145, except the pace car. In 1961, um, do you recall some of the NASCAR drivers that uh, you had to you know, racing against some of the household names were you were racing against right there. Oh, every, everybody. <laughs> yeah. For quite a few years, yeah. a lot of them were still running. Yeah. Uh, Pearson? Pearson. Okay, Pearson. He spun in front of me. What did he? In the, in the 125s or whatever they were running in. And I put it down on the infield at but at 150 miles an hour. <laughs> and I don't know how many times I turned around. But I come out of it just right side up and everything. And I continue down around the racetrack. So, that's it all. What was your car number that year at the race, remember? I think it was 52. Bro. Your scrapbooks and everything are with your son. Is that, is that yeah. right? And, and I didn't save a lot of stuff. Really? Didn't. Your wife wasn't cutting things out? And... Well, I had several wives and several oh. girlfriends. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. We won't go there. <laughs> Try to run that wave, calm deal. I remember. Uh, you know, you certainly got to look at, at guys like uh, Heil Russell and Eddie Kisco and. Uh, Bobby Schnars and Squirt Johns, and uh, they, they won. And there were others, you know, Paul Wilson back then was good, and there, were, there was a lot of good guys, Tom Dill. <laughs> Tom Dill, him and I. <laughs> you know Tom Dill's story? Everybody has a favorite Tom Dill story. Well, one of my favorites, of course, now this is after 65. Yeah, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. But, uh, we can open it up here. Tom and I were feuding quite bad. And one night in a 50 lap race, I knew that Tom was going to get me. So I thought the only way to solve this problem is to get him first. So I did, and I got him good. He ended up somewhere over by the by the flagpole <laughs> and he come back out on the racetrack and he was going around the inside of the racetrack kind of slow and I knew I knew he was waiting for me you know and he was gonna get me so I thought well 
I just got to get him again. And I did. Well, <laughs> after the race, Leonard come calling. And he got me and he took me and Tom down towards the pond. And this was after the race, you know, and he wanted to know what the hell was all that about. And I told Leonard that, you know, Tom was, which I think the week before he'd spun me out, and I told him that, you know, I had bumped Tom there early in the race and he'd spun out. And when I come around a few laps later, he was running around the inside slow and I knew he was going to get me, so I thought I better get him first. And Tom says, no, he says he broke my car when he hit me the first time, and I was just trying to, just trying to finish the race. <laughs> but you know, Leonard really loved it. He he really did. He he gave us hell, and you know, let's not have any more of that. And and uh, and pat you on the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, but Tom, he you couldn't do anything to him to. Uh, intimidate him. I mean, he'd come right back and get you the next week oh, yeah. and, and do it intensely and then laugh like hell yeah, about it. Yeah. Tom Dill. <laughs> I say he's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tommy wasn't that bad. I've, I've waited for him up on the corners, waited for him to come and took him down by the flagpole a few times. <laughs> <laughs> His, his no, wife. He wouldn't do anything like that. No, he? no. Oh. His, uh, his, well, I remember one night over the area, I'm setting him up there. He took me out in a, you in know, a, in a, I had to get qualified. He took me out in a consolation race or something. My wife used to set with Big Red as one of his wives. Oh. He'd been married, he'd been married 15 times so far. <laughs> But anyway, don't get mad now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I sat there waiting for him to come around. And uh, my little Norwegian told Red, she said, Tom and I are close, real close. And uh, she, he finally pissed him off. He told <laughs> and I did. I, I caught him. I got him. I got him. I got him. No. Don't get carried away now, he said. <laughs> the only way you got by Tom is when you get, he'd get a broke loose like you were talking about Dean. Get the ass end hanging out, then you shoot underneath him, shut the door so he couldn't come off the corner without hitting you. And the only way you got by him. And uh, one night at Erie, I don't remember what happened. I was leading the race, he was leading the race back and forth. And finally, I shot it underneath him and I run about two laps. It was one of them nights where everybody led broke down or something. But anyway, I've, I've got by him that probably the same that way. I got he come running over. We you know we're no longer friends and I said I rip my good. Now I won't feel bad when I wrap you right between the eyes. Now don't get caught. <laughs> anyway, we <we're> both laughed. <laughs> oh, God almighty. Oh if there was any arguments or anything, it only lasted a few minutes and it was gone the next day. Yeah. Tom Dale, yeah, Tom Dale, he was a hot shot. Uh, he come in there, you know, back when he was running. First Rex I had was uh, in the number two turn at state line, I hit a car broadside. We was in a broadside sliding through there, and I hit another car because he stalled right there. And it hit so hard that it narrowed my car up a foot. <laughs> Late models, they, they'd fly in there and jam the brakes on and get right back on the gas. We had to throw it and get back on the gas. And I think it was prettier racing myself, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was easier. Well, I think the crowd enjoyed it more when you Yeah. The last guy to try to run that way was Tom Dill, I remember, up state line. They also starting to come in, you know, good, good brakes, you know, lightened up flywheels and everything. They'd stop and then go. But you'd swear Tom was going to clean them all up out there practicing, you know. He'd, he'd get, you know, on the outside throwing the rooster tails and look at them guys that come in, boom, 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 <laughs> eat them right up. You know? Let's talk about Tom Dill. What was his reputation as a driver? Oh, he said he carried a gun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> There's only one man 
scarier was uh, 39, Johnny Whitehead. <laughs> he looked over at you and yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Uh, I don't think he had any teeth or something. He looked pretty scary, you know. Really? He intimidated you. Johnny Whitehead, yeah. 39. Tom Dill? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he was another one that, one of the nicest guys in the world. Yeah, he would definitely, you know, he would get you around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot about Tom. Yeah, yeah, he'd definitely do that. What was unique about Tom? Why would, you know, he... I, I actually think that he did it just because he thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. He used to pick on Floyd Finelli. And you got to be a goddamn idiot to pick on Floyd Finelli. <laughs> yeah, but, but he'd get him going sideways and stuff there. Floyd would be so darn mad. Tom, he'd be laughing. He'd think he thought it was funny. But that's the kind of character he was. For 51, Tom Dill. Oh, God, Tommy. Yeah, Tommy's a good friend. Uh, can't remember too much about... He used to be a, we used to go to Motordrome and race, and Tom would bring his motorcycle, and then he'd try to go up the hill with me on it, you know. And we get almost to the top, and I just put my feet down. I always tell the same thing: you can't kill me that way. I won't let you. <laughs> but uh, Tommy, we had a what was it Warren, Pennsylvania? He come up the back straightaway and flipped it. And I know I come up the back straightaway, and I was I was running behind him. But uh, the car looked like it was going to catch on fire. I remember jumping out and getting him out on my shoulders and run into the infield and that was it. And that was, that we were buddy from there that day on, honest to God, we are closer than, closer than what you can believe. Tom Dill, me and Tom Dill, we had a feud for <laughs> I don't know how many years and Tom would, Tom would rough you up on Saturday night, rough you up on Sunday night and come down here and sit down and drink coffee with me on Monday morning, and just like nothing had ever happened. Well, it's out there. <laughs> yeah, so they put you in the back row. Jerry Frank is alive, yeah, I and he remembers you. Yeah, he had to. We did a fight. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he said that you and him had some disagreements. Well, that was not. Hard to believe. <laughs> 51 Junior. Were you driving that car, Joe? No, Bill don't it, Bill. I, I raced it for Julian. Yeah. In uh, Midwest or Markham. In Martinsville? I raced it at Canfield and Cleveland yeah. and a few places. Yeah. How cars did you race, Joe? Do you remember when you were at State Line and it looks like 1961 through... I didn't drive all the time. I drove once in a while. Would you go to the track and if the driver wasn't there, you'd jump in? There wasn't a race track that we didn't go to. You had more cars than you had drivers. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you make any money at this, Joe? Was this for... Made a living out of it. Surely. <laughs> Now people have said that uh, when you when you're in the racetrack and in the uh, either driving or in the pits, that occasionally you would have a short temper. I can't believe that. <laughs> no, it was short. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of them around. Now, did you have to recruit like when Kenny C or Tom, no. or did did you have to go seek them out at, to drive your car, or did they no. come to you? No, they were waiting in line to drive my car. Okay, <laughs> is that right, Tom? <laughs> if that's the way Joe wants to say it, I'll go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> Did 
Did you ever give much instruction to the drivers? He tried that, but I wouldn't let him. Okay. <laughs> he wanted to put radios in my helmet. Really? <laughs> That's innovative. Yeah. But yeah. you didn't want to have that. I didn't think I needed to listen to him during a race. <laughs> Joe, you spent a lot of money over your lifetime on race cars. He spent a lot of money, but I made a lot of money on them. You know? So it was worthwhile? Yeah. We go to race cart and we come out and went in the first, second, third, you know. <laughs> I remember Tom Dill coming alongside. He raced the same year car, I think, and it was a Dodge as I did. And I can remember coming around and passing me. Uh, I think it was coming out of the fourth turn and looking over at me and smiling and just slamming me into the wall. Didn't hurt other than paint, you know, but and smiled. And that's all he did. No bad feelings, no nothing. And I knew what he was up to, you know. <laughs> so it didn't bother me. Kind of welcome to the club. Yeah. If, uh, if you hit Do Tommy Dill, there's a pretty good chance he would get a hit back. <laughs> and he could do it. Was he that good? Yes, he was very good. Yeah. Yes, he was. Well, Tommy was at the racetrack a few weeks later, and he had his bag with him. George says, Tommy's looking for a ride, and he was going for the late model. And he says, you're going for a ride. <laughs> Because that's what Tommy wants. He wants to drive a car. And he, he says, he'll get you. And he'll be happy. It'll be all over with. You just wanted to even the score. <laughs> well, I didn't spin him out. Well, yeah, I did that right around, yeah, out there. <laughs> yeah, I see him put his suit on. I knew he had a ride. And I see what car he was in. He missed me the first time. But he didn't miss me the second time. <laughs> George says, he's all right now. He did what he wanted to do. That's all over. He won't bother you anymore. Is there one racer that you just didn't want to have at that last lap? Well, I think one of my heroes is Tom Dill. <laughs> uh, Sorry, please. You win! You win! That's yeah. everybody, everybody says that. Yeah. I, I, he's one guy that you wouldn't want to try to get by in the last lap, I'll <laughs> tell you, because either you both wouldn't finish the race or uh, you wouldn't anyways. <laughs> But that was the way he was. But I'll tell you something about Tom Dill. I think he had more talent to drive a race car. And I mean, all-around talent. He didn't do a terrible amount of winning at State Line, but he just, he could do things with a car that I'd never seen anybody else do. Tom Dill, <laughs> he, he was a good guy, but... If he could gain a position by pushing you all the way, he sure do it every day. <laughs> In fact, a 50 lapper at Erie, I was leading that race, and and I guess probably what really hurt the most is the winner of that 50 lapper automatically qualified for the Stony Two. And I was leading that race. The white flag came out. I went through one and two. Come down the back stretch. Went into three. Wow. Tom, I knew Tom was chasing me because every turn I see that orange fender, you know, and, I, and I'm just driving my brains out trying to st stay ahead of him, you know. Take the white flag, go through one and two, down the back stretch. Like I say, coming into one, there's that orange fender. Coming into three, there's that orange fender. And it's really coming because he put me around so quick it wasn't even funny. <laughs> I thought, you got to be kidding me. In fact, my wife had both boys up at the fence because like, she was telling, hey, Dad's going to win the feature, Dad's going to, mm, Dad's not going to win the feature. <laughs> I think I finished like third because I think by the time I got myself gathered up, I think Ronnie Blackmore went by too. I think Ronnie finished second and I finished third, you know. That's the only thing I think about. <laughs> I still remember that night, you know. Well, I believe was racing at the time. See, Tom Dale, he was a hot shot back in about those heydays also. What was he like? Um, <laughs> crazy. Uh, uh, we had our run-ins, but also we became real good friends and used to do a lot of goofy things together. 
Such as? What kind of goofy things? Oh, uh, we might skip out from work every once in a while and go swimming during the summertime or just goof off. Do He was uh, he was a hard charger, uh, hard headed. Didn't care who he pushed out of the way, uh, but he could be a nice guy also. <laughs> we were talking about Tom Dale, and he was driving a Chevrolet for Joe Mobilia, and they wanted me to try it out. And I said, "Well, this car isn't handling worth a darn." Uh, I pulled it in off after a very few laps, and. Uh, Dill told me, he said, oh, you just don't know how to drive a race car. And he jumped in and he made about two laps and flipped that thing end over and he got out and he said to me, you know, I guess you're right, that thing don't handle real good. <laughs> that was probably one of the funniest things that... Tom was aggressive driver. <laughs> he's like... It's so political. He's, uh, he's like... Uh, like Earnhardt, <laughs> like Mr. Earnhardt used to be. Yeah, yeah. He'd give you a little bump and then go by, and then, uh, yeah, yep, he's, he's all right. But he's a good driver, but he, uh, he wanted to win. He was out there to win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, Tom and I are good friends today, but back in the day, I, you'd, uh, you'd just worry when you say Tom Miller on you. You'd know if he's going to wreck you or not. <laughs> he was he was quite wild. But, uh, he, he put on he put on a show. You know what the people came there to see. Around that third or fourth turn. I tell you what, you didn't want to be be uh, in front of Tom Bill. <laughs> <laughs> you win. <laughs> Dill would scare you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was in the points most of the time and. Dill wasn't a lot of times, and he didn't care if he won or not, you know. If he can't win, he don't want to finish. He wanted to win. That was the only way. Right. And if you were in his way, look out. When the fan I mean, he used to scare me. I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. I only weighed nothing. Of course, Tom Dill, you know, <laughs> he must have had a riot there. Still remember rolling that guy's car over, putting it up on top of the guardrails for him. Guy went, Tell us about that. What one. was it? The guy wanted him to try the car out because it was pulling to the right or something, and he he it pulled to the right. He put it right up on the guardrails. <laughs> for the guy. Tom Dill, he came to my garage one time when we were working in there, and he came down, and and uh, it was in the summertime, and both the bays were open. Now all of a sudden I hear this roar, here comes the motorcycle. He spun it right around in the garage. <laughs> Boy, we scattered. In the off. garage? In the garage. Oh, he, he was that way. He, I mean, we, we were friends and like that, but he was crazy. <laughs> I would. Uh, was there anybody out there also that sort of was more aggressive than others? The guy who really would kind of bump you around no matter what? Tom Dill took me out of a few races. <laughs> I tell you. You knew I was going to say that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Last lap with, with one person. Who was the person you wouldn't want to be on that last lap with? With the guys I've raced with? Yeah. Tom Dill. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest part about Tom is he was the nicest guy you'd want to meet, but he was a. Parky and Hart. And sit there and laugh about it. Yeah. I mean, he'd take you out and be just grinning all the way. Tom Dill. Scared the living daylights out of me. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> but I used to dread going to Erie. Sunday nights was terrifying to me. You think I'm thinking about this all the way up to Erie. For me to do good, I got to get past Tom Dill. <laughs> and. And Tom Dill, he, he could do things with a car, and it was in the first place, he wasn't fixing it. So he wasn't as careful about, you know, he wasn't worried about when he hit something. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he was good. I told you to ride the back. <laughs> it's a few dirty ones. But... Anybody you care to name? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a little bit.
Let me ask your name then. Uh, we, let me ask you. Let me ask your name then. Uh, we, we keep hearing the name Tom Dill. Is that? Is that? Would he be on your list? Yeah, he was. <laughs> you would least want to have on your tail if you're on the final lap of the final race. The guy you wouldn't want to have there, and virtually everybody. What would, who would you think? Tom Dill would be one because he'd give you a little push. <laughs>